and the heart can acquire knowledge. And so that you should worship Allah as though you are seeing Him. Bi'ain al qalb with the eye of the heart. And so what the questioner has done is to take us through different stages of the religious way of life. The stage of belief, the stage of faith, and then the internalization of faith to such an extent that the heart can see. When the electricity goes, then don't you have to feel for the matches, to light the matches? Without light, you can't see. As it is with the external eye, so it is with the internal eye. It is only when there is light in the heart that it can see. But that light is not sold in the stock market. No. Allah guides to his light whomsoever Allah wishes to guide. And if Allah puts light in the heart, then your PhD can be used usefully. But if there is no light in the heart, then Allah says of such people, they have eyes, but they don't see. They have ears, but they don't hear. They have hearts, but they do not understand. Ula'ika kalanam. They're just like cattle. What do you mean? Even with a PhD from MIT? Yes. You're just like cattle. If you do not have light in the heart. Indicating that there is going to come a time. There will come a time in the historical process when none will be able to understand the reality unless you're able to penetrate reality not only with these eyes but with these eyes and you can't fool Allah now if with your lips you worship him but with your heart, you worship the two gardens. You know what I'm talking about. With the river running in between. You know what I'm talking about. And the land is fertile. You know what I'm talking about. Don't look at me like that. Surah Tulkev. And the rich man and the poor man. If with your lips you say you worship him. But with your heart, you worship the dunya. Then there'll be no light in the heart. And at the end of the day, you will wring your hands and say, Ya laytani lam ushrik bi rabbi ahada. Oh, unto me that I ever committed this act of blasphemy. To worship with the lips and to worship with the heart, something else. And if you cannot see me, then at least you could begin the process by recognizing that I am seeing you. For illam takun tara, for innahu yara. And so these were three questions that were preliminary to the fourth and the fifth. And these three were not by accident, they were not haphazard. 
they were integrately linked, organically linked with number four and number five. We have to search for this system of meaning which binds together the five. Question number four. When will the last hour come? Oh, oh, I see. Allah has caused this event to occur to teach us something about the last hour and about the methodology for the study of the subject of the last hour. And the Prophet replied and he said, the one who is being questioned has no more knowledge of the subject than the one who is doing the questioning. So next question please. Which is a very, a very nice answer. Indicating he knows who he is. He knows how much he knows. <laughs> and he does not want to disclose anything more than what he's given in this answer. And then came question five, which is at the heart of this retreat. And I want to confess to you that I'm still myself learning from this last question and its answer. He asked, what are the signs of the last hour? And the prophet replied and said that you will find the naked barefooted shepherds competing in the construction of grand buildings. You'll see them as you drive around. <laughs> grand tall structures indicating that you have to be blind not to recognize the last stage when it comes because yesterday there were no tall buildings but now they're going up all over the world and each one wants to build a taller building than the other one so if you can't see and recognize that sign, well, you're just eating halwa or halawa. <laughs> it's time to wake up. When the tall buildings keep on going up around the world, that's the sign that you're living in a different age. You living in a last stage of history. And the methodology for the study of the world today is different from that which preceded this age. And it is time for Islamic scholarship to wake up to that lesson. And those who are building the tall buildings. Look at the language with which they are described. They are not men of wisdom. They are not sages. They are not true leaders. They are not people who can be measured with a yardstick, a measuring rod, and they measure tall. No. These who are putting up these big PR projects, tall buildings, they measure progress on the basis of the height of the building. They do not measure progress on the basis of integrity or character of faith or the beauty of personality. Now, these are the people